time for every time I thought with my dick I'd be rich and that's honest miss Yo, what's up everybody time to introduce another game on this channel besides runner 2 some of you guys are probably wondering like is it only gonna be runner 2? <laughs> Hopefully you've been enjoying that because man, I definitely have a good time playing that game But uh, no, it's not only gonna be runner 2 and this is the uh, like I said the next game that I'm introducing to the channel And this is called Asura's Wrath or as the Japanese would say Asura's Rasu and um, It's a Capcom game. I don't know which studio producer or whatever, but I'm pretty sure it's just a completely Japanese studio because um, they got some uh, interesting things going on in here but uh, right here in the beginning you see like just the scale of the enemies and shit that you play against in this game is fucking insane. <laughs> and it's got that whole like button timing thing. I don't know what that's officially called or whatever. And I, I, I guess it's you're judged on like the synchronicity with it. If that's a word, if it's not a word, fuck off. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but you, you are judged on that. So it says like good, great, excellent. And I don't know if there's another ranking on that. I have got it. There is. But. Um, yeah, shit's pretty crazy, and I thought that what I would do with this is I'm basically probably gonna just go into like live comps and stuff. Ooh, there's Asura's wife and his daughter, who's a priestess who actually can give him power. You see in the beginning of the of the video where uh, he's like almost dead or something, and she like fucking gives him energy or whatever. Um, but what I'm probably gonna do is I'm probably gonna do kind of like a live comish type of stuff because it's a it's basically a beat em up, but it's got like a, it's a hella kind of deep story, and the story's a uh, pretty important and it's like all episodic it's like part one part two part threes and all this stuff but anyways uh, there's a plot to uh, overthrow the emperor uh, actually they kill the emperor and it's done by uh, these demigods and the general as you can see there's his fucking wife all bloodied up and shit cut up in the womb damn son um but yeah he's part of like these these demigods there was eight demigods and there's supposed to rid the earth of like this evil I don't know if it's like an invasion or if it just I think it just keep keeps coming it's like some kind of reoccurring evil and shit that they can't like actually uh, oust but uh, they do their best to like I don't know suppress it or, or something um and basically what happens is there's a plot against Asura and they blame the death of the Emperor on him and he of course didn't do that because he's I guess he's evidently the purest of them all but uh, he goes back to get his fucking daughter and meets up with the general and the general fucks him up right here as you can see there. <laughs> he's gonna get the fuck out of here, bitch. And he's all like, man, with your death, uh, your death will christen the uh, beginning of New World Order and shit. And he fucking sees his daughter all captured as he, as he falls. <laughs> So, and, and man, there's a dope ass like fucking cultural reference and I actually got it. It was kind of weird I don't know how I got it. I can't remember who the fuck told me but and it's this one here You can see the spider and shit and he's basically he's in hell and he's got to climb his way out of hell and The, the whole cultural reference was uh, this uh, story called the spider's thread by uh, Akutagawa Do you do you know? Do you know? Something like that uh, It's hard to do the fucking Japanese names sometimes, but um, and what happens in this in this story is or it's like I think it's a kids a kids book or something um, is Buddha's like up in paradise and stuff and he's like just walking around taking a stroll around the fucking garden and he, he looks down this in this pond and he sees the depths of hell and you know like the very I mean at the very bottom you know like fucking just people breathing writhing breathing what the fuck writhing in pain and blood and and there's fucking spikes and shit and he sees this one guy and and he actually notices that he actually had one redeeming instance in his whole life and that was when he didn't fucking smash a spider and so what he does is he sends down the spider uh, on a thread uh, to to get him and the guy sees it in hell he actually looks up and he sees it and he starts climbing and he gets about halfway and he almost gives up and he and he looks down and he sees how far he's come and shit and he's like well fuck I I'm almost out of here I can actually get out of hell and at that time right at that moment he sees that other people have started climbing up of his thread and and he goes he, he fucking gets pissed off and he goes get off of my thread this is my salvation and right at that point the thread breaks and the whole the whole lesson of the story is that um, you shouldn't be concerned with only your salvation and uh, when, when it breaks or whatever and he falls back down into the pit uh, Buddha just you know in his all-knowingness just uh, starts his stroll again you know? <laughs> So it's kind of crazy, but um, I did I did like that. I guess I guess uh, uh, Octagon Yunosuke like uh, got that story or the inspiration from that from a from a Dostoevsky book, uh, The Brothers 
Kara Karamazov, something like that. I can't fucking do Russian, man. It's just crazy. Anyways. Um, but yeah, dude, this shit is fucking dope. I mean, the scale, like I said, of the enemies and shit, and everything is just fucking fresh. So I hope you guys kind of, uh, can enjoy that. I, I mean, I love the all-Japanese stuff, you know? They just got a totally different take on things, you know? Like, I remember just, even back in just Nintendo days, well, obviously, I mean, fucking <laughs> Mario. It's like, what the fuck is that about? People were either high and <laughs> I don't know what the fuck they were doing. Um, but, I mean, they've just continuously, like, kind of wowed me with the, the inventiveness and the uh, different view on things that they always seem to bring to the, the video game game. The video game game, you know, or just anything uh, kind of in general in life. This guy here that uh, that I'm fighting, uh, I'm not going to show you guys the actual, the end fight. I, I think I'll save that for the next, the next episode. But uh, it will show you like how it is all episodic. Oh, oh, I forgot to tell you. Yeah. So, anyways, he comes back, and I've, I got to give you guys the fucking background so I can just go into shit. He comes back. He actually makes it out of the pit twelve thousand years later, and the demigods no longer see themselves as demigods, but actual gods. And um, you know, this whole new world order that the general is talking about, it turns out it's just fucking shit. Uh, of course, like it, it would be, right? And Asura's not very happy about that. And he wants to get his fucking daughter back. And, you know. <laughs> it just adds to his fucking wrath. You know what I'm saying? He's fucking pissed off. And I'll show you here at the end, it gets all episodic and shit. It's like, ooh, here comes a fucking strike. Ooh, to be continued. So we're just going to continue from there. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Look forward to it. Talk to you later. Peace. If I had a dime for every time I thought with my dick I'd be rich And that's honest, miss